Hello. If you're a guitarist like me, you've probably encountered that really nasty <laughs> string noise that can be a bit hard to erase out of your recordings. Well, Isotope RX is an option, but it's like a gajillion and a half dollars. And if you're an amateur like me, it can be hard to justify that investment. So I'm going to show you how to do it for free with Audacity. Um, I'll be using GarageBand as well, but it should apply for any other DAW. Uh, you just need to know where your audio files are and how to replace them. Let's uh, let's get started. All right, so I'm just going to be doing this with GarageBand. You can probably apply this to any other software for uh, making music. But I've got this audio file here. It's got this string noise. It doesn't really sound natural. It doesn't sound like a guitar string noise. It sounds like a fire detector went beep in the background. So I'd like to remove it. So first step is to take note of what the name of the track is, which is string noise. Uh, in my case, it'll be different in any case, depending on what GarageBand is named the file. We actually have to quit GarageBand first because it will lock the project file. Um, and I would recommend right clicking and hitting duplicate to make a backup the stage because in the world of software, everything goes wrong. Um, and then and the next step is to right click and do show package contents, which will bring up right here, this, this file. And I've already got it open down here. And what you need to do is expand media and then audio files, and it'll have a list of all of your tracks in your project. And we, start, uh, we just took note and said that string noise is ours, so we'll drag and drop this into Audacity. And we'll expand this so we can see what's going on. And it's probably the squeak right here. Yeah, we can tell there's this huge peak, and I'm just gonna zoom in on this. And then I'm gonna switch to what's called the spectrogram view. Now, if you're not familiar, uh, what's down at the bottom of the low frequencies, and up, way up top here are the, the high frequencies. And if it's bright, like this yellow, that means there's a lot of volume. And then if it's dark, like the, uh, the black or the blue here, that means there's little to no or zero volume. And what we need to do, and it can be kind of hard, but identify which of these areas are from our string noise. It's going to be different in every case. Just mess around a little bit and, and see what we can figure out. So we have to just make a selection, just click and drag, just like this, and highlight these blobs of what we think are probably the string noise. And go to Effect, and go all the way down to, a, this is present in Audacity when you download it, it's free software, the Spectral Edit Multi-Tool. It doesn't bring up a menu, it takes no parameters, so it might look like it's doing nothing. But what it's actually doing is it's reducing the volume of our selection. So if you just... Click and drag to select more areas you think are, are, are potential uh, offenders of this, causing the string noise. And you can go to Effect, and you can do Repeat the last action, which for us was the uh, Edit Multi-Tool. Or you can just use the hotkey of Command-R. And I'm just going to locate what I think are probably the offending frequencies and doing Command-R. You'll probably get a lot uh, stacked on top of each other, which are probably either harmonics or... The, the sound bouncing around in the room. And uh, just play it and see if it sounds good. Yeah, actually. Okay, yeah, so it sounds like right off the bat there, it's just been totally removed. Um, word of caution is that if you really overdo this, and I'm going to drastically overdo it to demonstrate, there will be a noticeable difference in the audio. Like that, you know, even if it's like an, a small bit, like right here, you know, you can kind of hear it dip out. It's probably more noticeable if you're wearing headphones. Um, but yeah, uh, but this sounds good as is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit file and then export audio. And then I'm going to, you got to make sure you keep these parameters the same. This is what GarageBand saves the WAV files as. So you don't want to, you know, do 16-bit and accidentally reduce your quality or anything like that. And then just export it. Hey, adding a little side note here after the fact, but I felt I was unclear. I mentioned that you need to keep these parameters the same. And what I was referring to is the fact that your audio file had a certain bit per sample and sample rate that you need to preserve when you export. So Audacity will default these to whatever it was that you saved last, and it could be incorrect. So if we look at this uh, screenshot here of the file that I was using, we can see the sample rate was 44.1K and 24 bits per sample. So I need to set that and preserve it uh, so it's the same as the, the audio before we fixed it. And for your file, you should probably do the same. Okay, bye. And then 
uh, since I've backed it up, what I'm actually just going to go ahead and do is since I have my project file open here, I'm just going to drag and drop and overwrite the uh, original audio file. And then if you reopen GarageBand or if you replace this WAV file in whatever uh, you know DAW software you have to be uh, happen to be using, then we play it back and yep, it's gone here as well. So this has worked pretty well for me. And um, if you're like me and you don't do a whole lot and you're just an amateur and you don't want to spend you know like three hundred dollars just to remove a couple milliseconds of string noise, I think this is a pretty great alternative. So uh, I hope this was useful. Leave a, a like and uh, subscribe if you'd like to. I've got my songs on this channel as well and some other things coming up. So thanks for watching.